I'm just going to read your file real quick, okay. and then I will explain to you how it all works. Okay. Okay, hold on. Norman is so cute. Oh, he's gorgeous. Oh my god, he looks like a little man. <laughs> he does. But he's got this grumpy face. <laughs> Which is a little bit of the brie. It is, but he just um, really makes me feel so sorry for him. Oh, okay. Let me read what you wrote about it. Okay. Oh. Oh my gosh, he sounds like he's really strapped. He, huh? he really, really is, Laura. And um, the vet put him on something called Carmade with natural ingredients, but. I was stressing him out even more, trying to give it to him. He just hates to be picked up. Okay. Wait, it's not so for me when I watch TV, but during that time he'll always be listening out for someone or noise around him. Yeah, he sort of really stretches out his neck as if to say, I wonder who's coming down the stairs. What's that noise? He's really jittery all the time. Oh, okay. Now, so tell me this. Did you have him since he was a kitten? Um, well, I think he was about six months old because I put a deposit on him when he was about two months old. And then the breeder said to me, I can't sell Norman. I don't know he's, if he's going to survive or not because he wasn't feeding. And then um, I kept calling him back and he kept calling me and he's saying that, well, he was feeding a little bit and then he had a setback again and, you know, he was really, really ill. And then he Ooh. kind of sort of recovered and I went to pick him up. But when he first came here, he was fine, he was happy, he was playing all the time. He was quite obsessive about me though. He'd jump on the bed every night like I was his girlfriend, no one could come near me and um, just sleep on top of me basically. And when he said nobody could come near you, what would he do? He'd just kind of back off, I was his property basically. Would he like hiss at somebody or swat No, or? no, he just used to meow at them like, go away, this is my mummy. <laughs> Okay. He's, a, he's so, quite a character. Yes, he sounds it. <laughs> and so you have these other animals too. Are they cats as well? Or are they dogs? All, or are they? All cats. There's seven of them all together. And I've got two rag dolls, um, two mixed, and three Persians, including Norman. And he gets okay along with them? Yes, he's fine. I've got a girl, a rag doll, and he plays with her. He runs around with her whenever he feels like it. Or they have um, little wrestling fights. But if anybody else is around, he's very nervous. He doesn't come out. And that, when you say if anyone else is around, that's any other human? The children, the kids, yeah. I mean, they're old, older boys. They're 18 and 19. Um, he's okay with uh, my fiance Stephen, and he sleeps in our bedroom every night. It's his bedroom. And do your kids live with you? Yeah, they do. And but so if your kids are home, he's not. He goes and hides. He sleeps a lot anyway, Laura, and he comes out probably early evening to have something to eat. But um. He's more cautious about the younger boy, Jordan. He's 18. And he's got a problem with feet. He's got what? A problem with feet. Okay. And is your younger boy just like more athletic and more active? Um, not really. He runs down the stairs, but he just doesn't like him for some reason. He's not, okay. so, he's not so bad with the other one. If Josh is here, he will come in the kitchen. But Josh has got to stay seated in the chair and not move. Okay, 
So, okay, so tell me this. Um, your 18 year old, what's his name? My. Mike? Sorry, no, my what? Your 18 year old, your boy, oh, your J son. Jordan. Jordan, and, and, and what does he look like? Or how is he different than the older one? He's got Just so shoulder length there. He looks like, um, what's his name? Lord of the Rings? Uh, I don't know his name. Oh, I can't remember his name. So, sorry, Laura, I should say, it's St Stephen here, Sasha's fiance. I'm listening in. I hope that's all right. Oh, yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Of course. He looks yeah, like... the reason why I ask is I just want, um, when I have a picture of them in my mind, then it's easier for me to talk oh. to him about, like, how come you're more nervous about him than the older one? Then I have an image in my mind. Okay. Like, Elijah, like, he looks like Elijah Wood, and that's pretty oh. scary. <laughs> okay, and then the older one? Uh, the older one, he's um, a big boy, short hair dark hair. Okay. Um, okay. And... Okay. Uh, it's cure makes me curious about what's going on with him and, um, so our main objective really is to, um, find out you know, like, why are you so, why are you so nervous and, and, and to give him tools on how maybe he can calm himself when he is stressed out. Mm. And, um, what also I find curious because he gets along with the other cats in the house, right? So, like, other animals, I'll, I'll go over it more after we start talking to him. Yeah, sure. But, uh, Sorry about my parrot. That's <laughs> cute. <laughs> I think she's gonna lay an egg. That's what she usually oh. likes. So it has a fit beforehand. Laura, um, may I add so something? I, Laura, can, can, we, St can Stephen can add we something? Okay. Could I add something for, for colour? I, Norman's, it's almost as though he's schizophrenic, not in the clinical sense, but in his behaviour. So, for example, when it gets towards bedtime, I always go to bed first because I get up for work early. And um, he'll run halfway up the stairs and look to see if I'm following, and therefore I am. He gets excited and runs a little further and turns around and blah blah blah. Then we go into the bedroom and he'll have some uh, some dry food. It's a little routine we have. But when when we, we, I fill up the bowl and he'll go over there and I approach him. And at one level he's excited, his back goes up. Then he cringes. He'll start to eat. I'll 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 stroke him and he'll start to purr but still cringe. It's as though as though he's got completely polar feelings simultaneously. It's bizarre. Mm. Well, they can purr when they're stressed. Mm. Right. So it it doesn't a purr. It's like a, a purr and a tail wag. Do not necessarily always mean they're happy. They can do those th things when they're stressed as well. Mm. I have heard that. Um. So yeah, I'm curious. And but he. What, what really makes me curious and what I, what I feel like we need to get to the bottom of is <laughs> he doesn't sound like he came to your house this way. No, he didn't. Like something happened mm. during the time he was at your house. And you said that he's intact. Is that true still? He's not neutered? No, he's not neutered yet. Um, and what? I'm kind of wondering if maybe you should neuter him and see if that changes too, because it could be the testosterone level that's throwing him off. Yeah, we've but got... But there's, there's a lot of things I can tell you, but let's talk to him and yes, just get okay. his take on Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a hold of him, mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell him that I'm a human who's on the phone with you, mm -hmm. and that I can hear him. Okay. And why that's neat, because I can ask him questions for you, and mm -hmm. he can answer. And then also he can ask you questions or tell you anything that he wants. Okay. And just so you know, it's going to be quiet for a little while, and you might hear me typing. Mm -hmm. And then when I come back, I'll read to you what he said, and then we can go back and okay. forth. That's fine. Uh, yeah, the only thing that I ask of you is that you don't talk to him while I'm talking to him, because no, then he has right. to listen to both of us. Or if you two want to talk amongst each other while I'm talking to him, if you wouldn't mind putting it on mute. Okay. Sometimes that distracts me. Yeah, we won't talk. And um, and you're welcome to record the session if you have that capability. Yeah. 
Oh, I am. <laughs> oh, okay. you're a, you, you came up. Uh, you came uh, highly recommended by David. You probably I, know him. He is such a fan. He's so neat. Like he just he's made such great connections. He has. He's he, been really good to me, Laura. Yeah. Ah. Uh, He's made. He's been real good to me too. He's a sweet man. Yeah, very never, sweet. Never met him in person though. <laughs> no, nor have I. <laughs> um. Okay. So. Um. Okay. Hold on. Let me get. Him. Okay. Okay. He's in quite a lot of pain, actually. Really, Laura? Do you know where? Yeah. Um, I know over his body, and I can feel it. I'll read to you. He explains where. I can feel it, actually, in my body. 
Um, okay. He says, I feel a little stressed sometimes where, where my breath moves the wrong way in my body. It is like the breath and my body are confused. Now, that's like a really odd, I always pay attention to the first thing they say, because like, what do you say to, the first, to someone who can hear you? And that's really interesting that he's talking about his breath. Do one of you guys do yoga or pay attention to your breath? No. Oh, it's interesting that he would go there. And it, so it could just be his anxiety. Mm -hmm. So he knows about holding breath. Yeah. Um, sometimes my body feels like it wants to go one way, but it goes the other way. Mm. And I have such a bad pain on the right side of my neck in the crease of my shoulder. It feels like it is constantly pinching me, and it makes the back of my eyes sting. Mm. Oh. Which is sort of like a migraine. My God. Do you, know, do you know stinging eyes where you feel like you have to close them, or they will make the side of your head hurt? Yes. Also, my butt... Or yes, it is true. Oh, how cool is that? He works for a company in the US, um, online gaming. He makes videos and puts it out on YouTube. Oh, wow. And he has huge communities of hundreds of thousands of people come together to do it. Oh, wow. Isn't that neat? Mm. It's really neat. It's nice that no one knows that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I just feel so um, sad, Laura. Yeah, it's so sad. So, okay, I don't know, can you find a veterinary chiropractor where you are? Well, I said to Stephen this, his right paw doesn't look the same as his left paw. It's like it's a lot slimmer um, and it looks like it's got a bend. And when he walks, it's like it clicks, like he's wearing a pair of high heels or he's got really long nails you know that kind of sound yeah yeah and did, did I, I mentioned it to you a couple of weeks ago oh, didn't literally I? literally two weeks ago yeah, yeah which is his right side laura yeah so it sounds like it's coming from his neck and his shoulder but maybe that's made him just grow funny maybe. and his leg even um I wonder if you can, can, do they have veterinary chiropractors where you are? I think so. We'd have to look them up. We'd have to look them up. We're in yeah, London. If you could find one, and even if you could find a people chiropractor, if you can't find a veterinary one, because it sounds to me like he's <coughs> out in his atlas, which is so common. I can't even tell you how common it is, but it's like, it's at the base of the skull. And when that is out, it um, can create that feeling in the jaw. It can create that feeling in his eyes that he's talking about. And it can also create that feeling in his back end where he's having sort of like, it's so interesting. You know that feeling of like your foot being asleep? He has that feeling from his neck to a little bit above his middle of his back. Poor baby. So it's like a nerve is pinched. But I feel sick, which, Laura. Which also, when that atlas is out, it can affect the whole nervous system, which makes them more flighty. Okay. Um, so, okay. So one of the things I want to tell him too, I want to tell you both actually, mm -hmm. or all the three of you, um, or put it out to everybody, all the other cats too, that um, regardless if he has pain or not, he should still be able to know how to calm himself. I think that's really important. So uh, I'm gonna tell him this at the same time I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Animals have what we call calming signals and that's the body language that animals use to calm themselves, communicate with other animals, and they use them to communicate with people as well. Mm. And some of these body language signals are blinking of the eyes, looking and looking away, mm -hmm. licking the mouth, like licking their own mouth, yawning, 
um, stretching. It kind of looks like that yoga down dog pose or like in the dog world we call it play bow. Um, uh, holding up a paw can be one. Fake grooming, like if you could just go and lick a shoulder, fake groom. Yeah. Um, sitting down, lying down, coming to you at an arc can be one. Now, lack of calming, so this is body language that where they're forgetting to calm themselves. It's body getting stiff, eyes getting big, mouth closing, leaning on the front paws, and then from there, it can go into like a fear shake or a fear retreat, or it can go into any form of aggression. Okay. And so what we want, it's regardless of whether or not he's in pain, when he's feeling nervous, right? When he hears a noise or somebody mm. comes in and he's startled and he starts to get stiff and his eyes start to get wide and his mouth starts to close, he has to remind himself to lick and yawn and blink his eyes and to calm himself. He also has to know, because since he has the pain in his body, what happens is it's, it's like a vicious cycle. If something scares him, his body gets stiff and then that exasperates the pain in his body. So he has to become conscious that he's just reacting to something that, that may be a false fear and that whatever that is, is not creating the pain in his body. What's creating the pain in his body is him getting stiff. Mm -hmm. So, let me see what he says, hold on. making me <laughs> laugh Laura and I'm sad. <laughs> He's got advice for Stephen. How is he? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he might have. Okay so this is about the calming signals he says. I heard what you said and what happens when our when my mouth when my mouth is dry you can't lick because it feels funny. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I don't know why his mouth is dry. Uh, sometimes when I get scared, I start to see white to black. That's that migraine, you know, where you, you get like a white sheet and you just get a headache and it goes black. Yeah, I, I see white to black and sometimes I then smell a bad odor. I think that's his own body that's producing an odor. Mm. Does he ever smell to you, or is it just something in him? Just very occasionally. And just I think he's been spraying over the just uh, 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 over the past maybe maybe month, uh, maybe a month. I smelt very faint um, spray smell. Very faint. Oh, he talks about that later, actually. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't think that's what he's talking about with that. But then he will actually hear he he goes right into it when I. When I was young and sick, I was limp in my body and I had a problem with peeing. I couldn't pee right. And now sometimes when I go to pee, not a lot comes out. That's true. Yeah, I have to, but not a lot comes out. So oh, that sounds like a urinary tract infection, maybe. God. But Dude. maybe he's spraying. I don't want to ask him if he's spraying. But it's, uh, yeah. if, if he is spraying, it's not very much. Okay, because maybe he's leaking them a little bit if he, he's having problems, but that could also be the adjustment because it might just, if his body's out, it could throw everything out. Then he says, <laughs> this is the funny part, uh, can you tell Steven something? Can you tell him that sometimes when mom gets really busy, what she needs you to do is help her more? It would be really good if you could organize things around the house. <laughs> and she likes drinks in front of the refrigerator, not in the back. Is what, that true? What do I like at the front? Drinks. <laughs> kind of, yes. Is sure. it true? I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> I, I think she's talking about organizing the refrigerator that you want all your liquids in the front. I do have Is them at the true? front. Yeah, well, uh, interesting. So, 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 it's usually the milk that drives me mad when somebody puts it on the side and it leaks out. <laughs> that could well be what you're talking about. That's so funny. Um, and also, Stephen, like you are a really good friend to us. If mom starts to get overwhelmed and she doesn't drink enough, she gets a little cranky. No talking and flowers help. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it means the iron. Maybe the iron. I have an iron Maybe drink, what? Laura. I have an iron what? drink. I've got thalassemia. You have what? I've, I've got a blood disorder, thalassemia. And oh. I, I have a iron drink that I take every day when I oh. remember. <laughs> I'm afraid we've had to stop flowers because we've read about the, da the dangers of so many different varieties to cats, which is a pity. It was all—it was always uh, always lilies until we discovered how harmful they can be. Oh, oh, oh! That's interesting. Uh, well, I'm sure you can find flowers that are oh. not dangerous to cats. I mean, do your cats all eat the flowers? Junior does. He w uh, he kept getting pollen on him. I was so lucky he's still alive. Um, um, and so do you get cranky when you don't drink your iron drink? Yeah, and... Well, that's I've not bad. Ha I've hardly been sleeping anyway, Laura. It's 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 it's, it's unfair to say cranky. I should explain because Natasha isn't cranky. She's the most <laughs> laid-back, generous, <laughs> warm-hearted, loving, healing person you could wish to meet, and that's official. Um, well. In fact, Natasha's a healer herself. But um, uh, I think what there is an awful lot of negativity around us at the moment. An awful lot of stress, oh. um, court case going on, and so on and so forth, and. Um, uh, there are there are some people sending a lot of negativity and negative energy towards us. Now, we've, we've, Sasha and I are very well protected from that, but unfortunately it spills over to those we love. And I think the cats pick up on it a lot. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Aw, how cute is that? He's making sure you drink. <laughs> What's he doing? <coughs> 
Um, Norman did something very kind for me once. Okay. Um, um, What did you say, Stephen? I said, Norman did something very kind for me once. Um, now, I don't know if he'll know. I, I, I want you to see if, he'll, see if he'll talk about it. I don't know if he'll know or remember, or I don't know whether he's allowed to tell you, but it, could, you, could you ask him how he, how, how he felt about it? He'll know what it is. Okay, sure. if this is what you're talking about um but he talks about you he says well one time i had a discussion with him about how he, he needs to take better care of himself too <laughs> like i told him it is important that he is in our life because our boys need him i sort of wanted him not to be sad because when i see him sad i get sad so one of the things i told him was I gave him a dream. I gave him a dream of the future and I told him that we need him and he needs us. And then I told him that his heart needs healing and I was going to help him heal it. Oh. I put my paw on it and I healed it too. Do you know, Stephen, that the reason we need you is that you have what we would call a sane head. His head doesn't go really wild into fantasy when it needs to stay steady and we needed that. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> that's lovely. Thank what you. were you talking about? What did he do? Um, oh, I, it probably won't sound wacky to you, but um, uh, a relative uh, of mine channeled through him one night. It was really nice. And you know how I've told you how nor nervous Norman is. But on, on that night, we, we were very quiet and we bonded, we, we got very close, we understood each other, other very well. And I was lying down uh, on the bed, on my, on my stomach, and he walked over to me, he looked me in the eye, and very gently, he just took his, took his paw and stroked my cheek. I wonder if that's what he was trying to tell me when he said, I gave him a dream. It could be, it could be. And I put my paw on it and healed it too. Yeah, it, yeah, it could be, but it, it, it most definitely it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen because it was so uncharacteristic of him because he can be so skittish, 
and so nervy, but he was so gentle. Uh, it was he was like a it was like a different it was like a different chap, and uh, very gently. It wasn't just one stroke. He just he sat there, took his paw, and very gently, with with no claws, just stroked my cheek like a mother would stroke her son. Oh, I think that's what he was saying. Yeah. I mean, he said I told him that his heart needs healing, and I was going to help him heal it. I put my paw paw on it and healed it too. And maybe to him, the heart is just the whole body, you know, yes. when you touched your cheek. Yes, yes, I think I think that's it. Thank you for that, Laura. That's very kind. Aww. It's lovely to hear from Norman. Sweet Norman. <laughs> He's gorgeous. And what's interesting about him, too, is doesn't he seem wiser than two years old? Yes, he oh. is. Oh, yeah. He is. My God. There is deep, there is deep wisdom in that boy. He, yeah. you can see it in his face, and the way he'll 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 look at you and t tilt his head to one side with such an inquisitive look. Wow, we need to get his pain to go away. Absolutely. Mm. Do you, you think? Okay, so just this is something I just I'm only throwing this out there because you mentioned you both are healers. No, just Sasha. And, and do you think that? Um, do you think it's possible that Norman is taking on some of some of the stuff you're healing and he's not letting it go? Do you, does he help you at all with your healing? Like, what do you... I haven't done it for a while, Laura. I haven't been in the right place. Um, mm -hmm. But I suppose the timing does fit. Because it's junior, though. Yeah. It's junior. Though. It was usually junior that would be with me when I worked. It was. It was fascinating. Junior's um, a, a Turkish fan with different coloured eyes, and when Sasha's working, he'll go and sit with her. And my God, he just gets so hot. Really gets. Oh. Hot. Really gets hot. What's that cat's name? Junior. He's sat here now. He's there now. Do you want me to ask him? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, tell me what Junior looks like. He's pure white, he's got one blue eye, one green eye, and he's crossed between uh, British white and Turkish fan. So he's slim and he's got very pink nose and pink lips and pink ears. And he's about six. And you can, prob you can probably ask Junior about the conversations that he and Sasha used to have before we moved, moved house. Okay, and uh, did you say he was slender? Does he have long hair or short hair? He's short hair and he's quite um, muscly. Okay. He's athletic, I should say. Yes. He's up and okay. down like a yo yo. Oh, Mr. Tina, come on.
Nothing you can say can be any crazier than real life. Okay. Um, what I want to tell my mom about her body problems is that she has to let go of the wounds from her past. <laughs> there was an incident that I don't think she remembers where she was given a gift and she was also... Now, the word that sort of came was molested, but it... It was lack of a better word. I searched and I searched and I searched for a better word. But I don't think it's like a sexual molested. Now this is the crazy part that you're going to think I'm totally nuts. Is that it feels almost like from another planet or something. Oh my god. Yeah. Carry on. And um... And so then he says, and one of the things she has to do is let go of the pain of that incident. Foreman loves her so much, he reflects what she needs to heal. She needs to be more balanced. I want my mom to know that she's so powerful that it's okay to compartmentalize that incident so that she can live a more free life. So what he's saying, or what I feel like he says through this, is that something traumatic happened to you. And it feels like, I hate saying abducted, <laughs> because it sounds so crazy. Oh my but it, god. It feels like something like that. Oh, yeah. Laura, Laura, you're, you're, you're good. <laughs> we, we know for a fact um, we were led, and you were led, we were led to each other, but I, I really didn't think you'd get anywhere near this, but you're on the money. Well done. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> so, um, okay. So then when I feel like, uh, then I'll talk more freely of what I, what yeah, I see. Yeah, feel okay. free, feel so, free. So um, what I feel like is that something might have happened to you, that you had been chosen to take some sort of gift. Yeah. But in order to have that gift, something had to happen to you where you felt like your body was molested or your body was taken advantage of, or your body, something was done to your body that was against your consent. Yeah. But it, but the, the reason for it was not, um, the, the perpetrator or the one that did that to you, it was not for, um, for bad reasons. It was for reasons that are, are um that are to heal the planet or to heal the world it was like you were chosen to carry this gift and in order to give you that gift that is what needed to happen and so what junior is saying is that stop sort of searching i don't know if you are searching but he's saying stop sort of searching like trying to remember what happened and just sort of say, okay, this happened, now I can compartmentalize that and put that aside. I don't need really to explore it. I don't need to remember it all. I don't need to to um, learn every detail about that so that I can heal my body and live this gift more freely. He's correct. Does that make sense? <laughs> He's correct. I do think about that day practically every day. I go back over it over and over again. It's just subconsciously, really. May I ask? Mm. You a, may I ask you a question, Laura? Yeah. 
Um, so when Sasha has told me um, that she used to chat with Junior, she said that he talks 100 miles an hour and can't wait to get things out and he's really excited and he's always quite scatty. Is that how he talks? To you? Um... I don't hear him like that, but that does not mean that he's not like that with Sasha. Mm -hmm. And I think that for this conversation, Junior really wanted to get something across, so he was slow and steady. Right. But he he recognizes, like when they talk to us, they recognize who they're talking to. And for me, especially when I'm hearing something like this, I need him to be slow and steady. Because if he eat it, I might lose it or I might not be able to filter it all. And for me, especially if I'm going to repeat this to a client, yes. I want to make sure I have everything right. So for me, he had to go slow and steady. It doesn't mean that he's not going fast for her. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Well, I have to say, I'll shut up now. Um, but um, what you were saying was so in a, in a slightly symbolic way actually but it was so absolutely correct it gave me goosebumps and, the, and I shed a tear Aww. because it's nice to hear it it's nice to hear it played back by an independent third party so to speak <laughs> has been before but I mean um, but it's, it's lovely so thank you for that yeah because I feel like a higher power wants you to know that like Sasha like, I feel like a higher power doesn't want you to suffer her from that incident and like whatever your blood disorder is like they don't want you to have that like it, it's like it's like I don't know like there's this sense of like because that happened to you that maybe there's a part of your own conscious that feels dirty or something and that's created you know and you're not it's like it's you were chosen in a good way mm, I, know, I know Laura I and I won't say this, I mean, I, this is, some, I'm not, it's been a long time since I actually studied stuff like this, but there was a time where I studied it a little bit more, more and th there are other beings of ill intent that might do things like this. Oh, that's so well. <laughs> but, but I don't believe that that was the being that had, that, that was with you. No. No, we know the difference. <laughs> mm. Do you have any questions for him? Uh, I, I did send you some questions, Laura. I can't remember them now. Um, would you tell Norman that we love him so much and we're getting really upset? Um, I practically cry every night, really worried about him, what to do. I just want him to be a happy little boy again, like he used to be. about the beings he says I wonder if talking about that being that looks at us through the window because that being has plants growing out of its head and in the eyes I see more plants so, can you tell my, my mom about the juice you drink because that would be good for her no, that's so, not. I just drink green juice every day like you know cucumber parsley 
spinach. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> Why? Uh, but it's interesting because. Norman wants you to drink. He's like very into like your your drinks that you drink. <laughs> like so I mean it must be something about the fluids and how fluids affect your cells or something. Maybe. And I don't know about this this guy that the spirit that he sees in the window with plants on his head and <laughs> And plants in his eyes. I think that's more a symbol for like somebody trying to tell you that greens are good or or fresh foods or plant based foods. You know. Maybe. Bra bravo. I've noticed Norman does look at the walls. <laughs> bravo, Norman. I think he's right because Sasha doesn't eat enough greens. Definitely not. Yeah. Um. Then he says, "Mom, let's make a deal." You bring me to the chiropractor, and I will practice my calming signals. And you let the energies that bother you go into a box and then send it away. I think it needs to go into a box and then send it away. Perfect. It's a deal. Yeah, I think that's interesting, too, because remember how before he talked about, oh, no, that was Junior who did it, who was telling you to compartmentalize the incident? Yeah. I think that's interesting imagery like boxes compartments yes you know where like other people uh, like other animals or other spirits might say like to let it flow away let it flow in a river let it you know but they're like telling you to box it up um tom says the thing that is the most important is to put triangles in the corner of each room and on my collar I need a triangle on me. And the other thing that is so important is we need to do floor exercises. Do you know what that is? No, I don't, Laura. It's like, I would think that it would be something like stretching or something where you would sit on the floor and do. Do one of your boys do something on the floor? Yes. The exercise in my bedroom. So maybe whatever they're doing on the floor is they want you to do. Wait, <laughs> they're trying to kill Wait. me. <laughs> oh my god, how funny. <laughs> and I want a tunnel. I need a tunnel to plug in and I want to tell you this. We need fans that bring in fresh air. Please turn on a fan. Oh bless, we, uh, we took their tunnel away. It was making too much noise. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, I'm really interested in this triangle. What, what, what do you think that's all about? That's obviously symbolic. It is symbolic. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I have a friend who was a professional skateboarder. His name is Rodney Mullen. And he, he's also, a, um, he's also uh, an engineer. He's like a genius. Mm -hmm. But he talks about everything that he does is in triangles and threes. So it's mathematical, too. And I'm not exactly sure why he's bringing it up, but I don't know. Do you, I mean, are there any symbols that you look at that have triangles in them? Uh, I'll have to have a, have a think. There are a few symbols around, but I mean, the... The, the classic ones are the Holy Trinity, which is three, so that's triangular. Uh, there's uh, the Osiris is eye, is an eye in the uh, uh, in a uh, in a triangle, isn't it? I don't know. It, it, it tends to be. Yeah, about... and so is that something you have in the house? No, no, it's not. I, we tend, tend... I, I don't know why in the corners of the house. I don't. I don't know enough about that stuff to tell you. No, I, I, it's, it's a bit, bit of a mystery that one. But we we but... do sage every night. Oh, that's good. I would maybe corn. Google, like, why is he on a triangle on his collar? He doesn't even wear a collar. <laughs> okay. Um, let me find that out. Hold on.
curious. He says, um, the triangle is so important because it keeps protection on us. And I want the triangle on me because then it keeps away all the dirt that lingers around us. You don't understand. My mom is really powerful and she's being watched. And it is important that there are triangles around so that only the right spirits can see through them. He's good. He's very good. He's Laura. very good. He's very good. That's that's, uh, that, that's very interesting because we're we're, um, we're not into all that symbology and stuff like that. But it's 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 uh, it's perfectly true to say that uh, Sasha has an important job to do. Um, we mm. talk, talk about it all the time, and it's very, very important to know that there are a lot of people, whether or not they realise that in this world, who are um, um, who are not not pure and uh, will instinctively want to destroy that. Um, you may have come across that yourself because what you do is extremely pure, and um, it's important to have protection around us all the time. And there is very great protection, and so maybe Tom's taking something from his last incarnation uh, where he knows about triangles because uh, I'm not entirely sure um, but um, I'm, 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 I'm gonna research it on the web and see if we can find out what he's talking about yeah I would like if, whatever you find out I'd like to hear you know I've come across some like psychic teenagers and they see some of the psychic kids now are seeing like geometric shapes right interesting too like they see them in people's auras right it's very interesting yeah that's neat and this this and it keeps away all the dirt that lingers around us i mean i think we all have that to some extent oh, yeah. people in the healing field more but i think that's just part of being living you know, there's just stuff on the other side that's dirty, that's around you, and that, you know that that's so true. But of course, when 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 you're healing, you 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 make yourself more sensitive to it, so you've got to be more careful. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Sorry, Sasha. Sorry. That's neat. Ah. No, oh, we started again now. <laughs> <laughs> he wants a triangle. <laughs> so interesting you'll have to let me know we will most definitely Sasha I'll sorry. Sorry, sorry sorry I thought you were talking to Stephen Laura could you no. ask Norman a question please before we go I think sure. time is up isn't it yeah um is he happy that we're his parents and does he love us because I'm getting really paranoid <laughs> actually you are I just want to give him so much love, but I can't because he's always backing off. Yeah, well, he's backing off because he's in pain. And so, remember, when you touch a body who's in pain, you're bringing awareness to a body that's in pain, and they don't want that, so they're going to move away. I, I even panicked so much a couple of weeks ago. I took him to the vet to get him checked out, and all oh. she did was put him on car made. So when it comes to chiropractic, usually a vet doesn't pick it up unless yeah. they're mm. a veterinary chiropractor. Okay. So it's really common. Like sometimes they'll say, oh, your animal has a brain tumor when all they need is adjustments. Yes. So they, they don't always pick it up. Um, okay. Hold on. Thank you.
so cute. <laughs> he says, yeah, I love my people. I'm not sad that I'm here at all. They got to know I love them. Mom, you are so sensitive. Sometimes you see pain and you think it's not love. It is still love. Mom, you know, you have to know something. When you see something, it's not always directed at you. Sometimes it is internal. Oh, so loving. what he's saying is sometimes if you notice, and then he's saying it with people too, if you notice someone, if it looks like they're thinking like they're not happy or they're angry, it's not that they're, it's directed at you. It's directed internally to the, towards themselves. Mm. Mom, I have to tell you, I love our whole family, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. <laughs> oh, God, I love that boy. <laughs> so cute. He really is, Laura. Aww. That's wonderful. Well, you, have, you have to keep me posted. You have to tell me. Definitely, to Laura. Too. I'm going to make another appointment anyway. I want to speak to my rag doll that passed about a year and a half ago. Okay. Um, but I'll book that with you. And I, I do want to book the cats in one by one. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. Um, I joined your Facebook page. David said you were on Facebook. Oh, thanks. And he wants to hear how it went tonight. <laughs> He's so kind. Oh. He is. So where did you meet? You met him through Facebook? I met him. I've got a page called The Magnificent Seven, which represents my cats. Oh, cool. And David featured Tom on his page on Facebook. And we've been chatting quite a lot. He's a lovely man. Yeah. How neat is that? I yeah, love I know. It. I've met some gonna... lo lovely people on Facebook. I know. Isn't it amazing? I know. I'm going to check out your page. Yeah, please do, Laura. I'd love to see you there. Yeah, I think that's so neat. I'll be, recomm I'll be recommending you anyway. Thank <laughs> There's you, loads Beth. of cats with problems. What did you say? There'd be loads of cats with problems like Norman's. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. So it's a magnificent seven, but it's in number seven. Oh, number seven. Yeah. Okay, I wrote it down the other way. Yeah. Very good. Laura. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much. You're welcome, you guys. You guys be well and keep me posted. Definitely will do. You too. Okay. okay. Speak to you Bye. soon. Bye. 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 Cigarette, badly.